Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for October the 23rd's lesson in A Course in Miracles workbook for students, lesson 296. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. Remember yesterday, the Holy Spirit looks through me today. Today, the Holy Spirit speaks through me today. We want to learn to hear that one voice in everything. The, Holy, the prayer says, The Holy Spirit needs my voice today, and all the world may listen. The Holy Spirit needs my voice today, that all the world may listen to your voice and hear your words through me. I am resolved to let you speak through me, for I would use no words but yours and have no thoughts which are apart from yours, for only yours are true. I would be Savior to the world I made. I would be Savior to the world I made. For having damned it, I would set it free, that I may find escape and hear the word your holy voice will speak to me today. There's that one voice. And you notice how he says that I would be Savior to the world I made. For having damned it, you know, through our practice of judgment, we've, we've damned the world and ourselves. But we're going to set us ourselves free by being a savior to what we've made, by hearing the one voice. I would set it free that I may find escape and hear the word your holy voice will speak to me today. And the write-up says, we teach today what we would learn and that alone. We teach today what we would learn, and that alone. You want to learn to hear the one voice? Well, then speak for the one voice. We want to teach today what we would learn, and that alone. And so our learning goal becomes an unconflicted one and possible of easy reach and quick accomplishment. How gladly does the Holy Spirit come to rescue us from hell when we allow his teaching to persuade the world through us to seek and find the easy path to God. Look what he's saying, that in our, in our, our, our way, our, meanding, our, our meandering uh, through the world, when we use judgment as our guide, he says we're in hell. That is hell. But we can... We can free ourselves from hell by doing what? How gladly does the Holy Spirit come to rescue us from hell when we allow his teaching to persuade the world through us to seek and find the easy path to God. We want the easy path to God, the happy one, the one that all pain and terror is removed. Okay, let's take a look at our text reading. So let's, uh, we're ready to begin chapter 8. While you're turning there, the introduction of the journey back, uh, let me tell you where I'm sitting. I'm sitting here on, my, on my, my drive coming into my place, and there's a multi-flora rose. I've got some on my place, but this one was an easy one to see. And um, this time of year, the multiflora rose is making a whole lot of little seed, you know, rose buds, and they're edible. They say the seeds around, or the, the seed, which is, it's a very little rosebud, and there's, there's a lot of, um, they actually taste pretty sweet. There's not much fruit there, and if you, and out of that one little rosebud, I think I'm finding one, two, three four, five seeds. Am I holding that up where you can see it? I hope I did. Anyway, they say there's some root or some seed. Wow, there's six. Uh, must have been six uh, seeds in that little rosebud. But the rosebud itself is quite tasty. A little hard to chew up. Uh, birds like them and eat the seeds and spread these things. Look how... how um, Look how those thorns, you see why a lot of farmers call them invasives, because they do spread. They're aggressive. They grow strong. They don't take much to get them started. Uh, 
here's one that uh, that's a, a probably a last year dried one here's one that's green this year and got some uh, rose hips on it they actually taste pretty good they make jams out of them you can birds eat them people can eat them they say the root hairs like I said are, are that well I don't know if I said it but they are not so good for you I said the root hairs I'm I mean the hairs around the seed so I'm not sure about they say that it can cause digestive um, complaints if you eat the the hairs on the seeds uh, let's see what's it other names for multiflora rose of course the scientific name is Rosa multiflora uh, also known as baby rose Japanese row rose many flowered rose rambler rose uh, El Jitsu rose and seven sisters rose they're from Asia uh, they grow in China Japan and Korea uh, considered an invasive in a lot of places around here most people count them as invasives uh, let's see what else did it say about it uh, found this on uh, plants for a future uh, been used to treat constipation and articular pain ulcers wounds injuries says the seeds are laxative and diuretic so evidently uh, take the little root or the, the seed hairs off and then the the seed itself is, um, I suppose you could probably just wash them real well. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how you get the little hairs off. I couldn't see them. They must be awful small. Root is rich in tannin, thus it's astringent and uh, carminative. Uh, let's see. Um, hairs, uh, let's see. Um, oh, the fruit is rich in keratin and vitamin C. Young leaves and stalks are edible cooked or raw so the little the little uh, seeds or the little stalks that come up in the spring and that the little leaves they're edible okay let's go take a look at um, at uh, the journey back introduction you are hampered in your progress by your demands to know what you do not know this is actually a way of holding on to deprivation you cannot reasonably object to following instructions in a course for knowing on the grounds that you do not know. The need for the course is implicit in your objection. Knowledge is not the motivation for learning this course. Peace is. Hey, hang on to that idea. What's the uh, motivation for learning this course? Uh, he's saying your motivation uh, ought to be peace that you want to have peace. It says, knowledge is not the motivation for learning this course. Peace is. As the prerequisite for knowledge, peace must be learned. This is only because those who are in conflict are not peaceful. And peace is the condition of knowledge because it is the condition of the kingdom. So yes, you, want to, you, you do want to gain knowledge, but the motivation for getting to knowledge is to acquire peace. Paragraph 2. Knowledge will be restored when you meet its conditions. This is not a bargain made by God who makes no bargains. That's, that's interesting, isn't it? How many times we prayed to God when we were younger. God, if you'll help me this way, I won't ever do this again. Yep. <laughs> well, knowledge will be restored when you meet its conditions. This is not a bargain made by God, who makes no bargains. It is merely the result of your misuse of his laws on behalf of a will that is not his. <laughs> knowledge is his will. If you are opposing his will, how can you have knowledge? I have told you what knowledge offers you. But it is clear that you do not regard this as wholly desirable. If you did, you would hardly be willing to throw it away so readily when the ego asks for your allegiance. The distraction of the ego seems to interfere with your learning, but the ego has no power to distract you unless you give it the power. Now that's nice to know, isn't it? The ego has no power to distract you 
unless you give it the power. And paragraph three, last paragraph we'll read today. The ego's voice is a is a, an hallucination. The ego's voice in a, is an hallucination. You cannot expect it to say, I am not real. <laughs> Hallucinations are inaccurate perceptions of reality. Yet you are not asked to dispel them alone. You are merely asked to evaluate them in terms of their results to you. If you do not want them on the basis of loss of peace, they will be removed from your mind for you. If you do not want these hallucinations or these voices of the ego that distort reality on the basis of your peace, then they'll be removed for you. It, it's real easy. Just I, I've, I've, I've really ex I've told you by listening to the one voice, it's the voice for peace. Always stay tuned in to your peace. And when your peace is shattered, stop immediately and ask the Holy Spirit to show you what you thought that God would not think because that's where the loss of peace comes from. Your knowledge will be restored as you systematically look at each disturbance that you've put out using the ego's uh, uh, observation and point of reference. So you are merely asked to evaluate them in terms of their results to you. If you do not want them on the basis of loss of peace, they will be removed from your mind for you. Every response to the ego is a call to war. And war does deprive you of peace. Yet in this war, there is no opponent. <laughs> this is the reinterpretation of reality which you must make to secure peace. And the only one, and the only one you need ever make. Let's read that again. Every response to the ego is a call to war. When we listen to the ego, we're, we're siding with conflict, the idea of war. And war does deprive you of peace. Yet in this war, there is no opponent. This is the reinterpretation of reality which you must make to secure peace. That there is no opponent. There is no evil. There is no wickedness. There is no, um, there is nothing that is contrary to the wholeness of the kingdom. That's the only reality. This is the reinterpretation of reality which you must make to secure peace and the only one you need ever make. Okay, let's go take a look now uh, at our Under the Holy Spirit Speaks Through Me today, our reading, What is the Real World? The real world is a symbol like the rest of what perception offers. Yet it stands for what is opposite to what you made. Your world is seen through eyes of fear and brings the witnesses of terror to your mind. The real world cannot be perceived except through eyes forgiveness blesses. So they see a world where terror is impossible and witnesses to fear cannot be found. The real world holds a counterpart for each unhappy thought reflected in your world, a sure correction for the sights of fear and sounds of battle, which your world contains. So we've been listening to the ego and, and we're listening to war we just understood. Well, the real world holds a counterpart for these thoughts. For each unhappy thought reflected in the world of the ego, your world, a sure correction for the sights of fear and sounds of battle which your world contains, the real world shows a world seen differently through quiet eyes and with a mind at peace. Nothing but rest is there. There are no cries of pain and sorrow heard, for nothing here remains outside forgiveness. And the sights are gentle. Only happy sights and sounds can reach the mind that has forgiven itself. What need has such a mind for thoughts of death, attack, and murder? What need has such a mind for thoughts of death, attack, and murder? 
What can it perceive surrounding it but safety, love, and joy? What can it perceive surrounding it but safety, love, and joy? When you sit in your quiet meditation and you, you just let all thoughts be replaced with the one voice, with the eternal uh, self, with good, with God, do you... Uh, do you rest in the, in the, do you, you come to realize that safety, love, and joy is all that surrounds you? What is there it would choose to be condemned? And what is there it would judge against? The world it sees arises from a mind at peace within itself. No danger lurks in anything it sees, for it is kind, and only kindness does it look upon. The real world is the symbol that the dream of sin and guilt is over, and God's Son no longer sleeps. His waking eyes perceive the sure reflection of His Father's love, the certain promise that He is redeemed. The real world signifies the end of time, for its perception makes time purposeless. The Holy Spirit has no need of time when it has served His purpose. Now he waits but that one instant more for God to take his final step and time has disappeared, taking perception with it as it goes and leaving but the truth to be itself. That instant is our goal, for it contains the memory of God. And as we look upon a world forgiven, it is he who calls to us and comes to take us home reminding us of our identity, which our forgiveness has restored to us. <laughs> and so the story ends, and they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> I actually wrote that at the bottom of my page there, because that's, to me, that's the, the end of the journey is when we reach the real world, <laughs> a world so beautiful. But even that's not our goal. We're still waiting for God to give us that that, that, that experience of grace that, that, that we leave all perception behind. And that's not, that's, we're being prepared for that in, in becoming miracle-minded. But, but, but we are going to reach the, 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 the beautiful scenes and experience of the real world, the, the place of joy. Okay, let's take one look again at the Holy Spirit speaks, speaks through me today. The Holy Spirit needs my voice today, that all the world may listen to your voice and hear your word through me. And I feel so honored that I get to use my voice to share with you. And now you turn around and share with others. This is the way it all, we extend the kingdom. We extend it to what already is. The lesson that is that it's everywhere and that we're just all realizing it. The Holy Spirit needs my voice today that all the world may listen to your voice and hear your word through me. I am resolved to let you speak through me for I would use no words but yours and have no thoughts which are apart from yours for only yours are true. I would be savior to the world I made, for having damned it, I would set it free, that I may find escape and hear the word your holy voice will speak to me today. And then it says after the prayer, we teach today what we would learn and that alone. And so our learning goal becomes an unconflicted one, and possible of easy reach and quick accomplishment. How gladly does the Holy Spirit come to rescue us from hell when we allow His teaching to persuade the world through us to seek and find the easy path to God. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. <laughs> 